do you want me to address you by ugly or the Conrad or ugly? Everybody knows me by ugly. <laughs> I respond to ugly as a Conrad. I would know how long ago I've been, how long have they known me? And I, where they go? we go back to, you never know. But I've been known as Big Bird. I, that was my handle in prison. I've been known as Bumblebee Braun. And so I, as ugly is not my first meme. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hopefully it's my last one. Would you be uh, available to talk about, um, you know, just summarize how your life came to Bitcoin and stuff like that, how you started sure. in gold yeah. and, you know, why you were uh, just using this uh, goat suit before and stuff like that? Would you be okay with that? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 yeah, no, you just just pull it out. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm sl slowly addressing these issues. Some of it's not easy for me to do. Yeah, I know. You know, it's particularly... So, but, but I, yeah, I, I'm coming out more and more just, it kind of has to be pulled out of me. Well, I've been in this thing, uh, sound, the sunny mo sound money movement, you know, for, you know, the last basically 50 years. So I, you know, and I do, I knew personally, you know, Hayek and Friedman and, and, uh, uh, EC Harwood and Hazlitt. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm coming at it from a different perspective. And so, and I'm always trying to reach out to the modern Bitcoiners because some of, I see exactly the same issues. I think that they've got something brand new and the technology is new, but the debates we're going through, they're same issues we were going through 50 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> you know, and that's the ironic thing is just, that's what the irony caught me on the, uh, the Miami conference when, you know, we had Ron Paul get up there. I've, you know, I've worked my whole life to abolish legal tender and here we are, you know, introducing legal tender at a trade show. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Which, exactly. You know, I get it. I, you know, I can't, I can't help but be enthusiastic about it, but, you, but you, you know, there are some real inherent, you know, problems with it. And uh, the way, best analogy I have is, you know, what if, you know, the United States announced some major uh, monetary policy and announced it at a trade show in Shanghai? I don't think that'd fly very well. <laughs> in the United States. So, but I mean, I understand why it's being done and, you know, we're, we're going to make lots of mistakes and so forth. And I thought George Selden really outlined it well. And he, you know, all of those issues. So, but I think that it, I think that issue that you raised is a biggie. It really is a biggie. If, if we, if we lost something and believe me, you know, my wife is Mexican and we lose something in translation all the time. So <laughs> sometimes it's usually for the best because when we got to know each other, we only discussed the important things. <laughs> it, it took us years before we started getting off track. Okay. Ugly. So, so uh, let me ask you, so let's, would you like to summarize just a bit how you started uh, your, you know, financial uh, career, uh, you know, s starting with gold and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I, uh, it probably goes way back to, you know, my uh, college years and my student. I grew up during the Vietnam War era and back then you either went to war, you know, or you went to school because you get the deferment. And which was really unfair because basically, you know, the, and it was McNamara came out. Yeah, we were, you know, recruiting all these young, dumb kids and sending over there and they were cannon fodder. And, uh, you know, I'm a patriot. I believe, you know, I love uh, my country. I love the United States Constitution, but I despise my government right now and I'm scared to death of them. And I think for a very good reason. I mean, we're seeing what's happened now in Afghanistan, where we just abandoned. We got went somewhere we should have never gone, and now we're leaving it worse than if we entered it. And that's just the story of American interventionism. And uh, that was the the moving. I mean, when I was a radical, I mean, I was a part of a. I I thought uh, one of the things I wanted to do was take over the local. Uh, uh, TV and radio station. They were one and the same up on a hill. And I said, yeah, we can go. To, I knew where the National Guard Armory was. We could have broken in a National Guard Armory, taken over the radio and TV station and, uh, you know, changed the world. Well, I had two things that went wrong with that situation. 
The first one was all these guys were going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they came to taking the action, they they faded to the into the woodwork. And the second question was, well, okay, now that I've got a radio station and I've got, you know, a platform, what the hell am I going to say? And how am I going to make anything <laughs> different? <laughs> and so that was kind of my wake up call. And then after they uh, had a volunteer army, my, my wife at the time, we both said, well, you know, now that's voluntary, I'll, you know, I'll volunteer or in, you know, but I wasn't accepted. That was uh, my wife could have, Oh, well, we'll take your wife. She can become an officer, but you don't qualify. So I've never been able to hold down a, a regular job anyway. So I have, I'm kind of a forced on, on, entrepreneur, but uh, my, yeah, my father would, when I was at school, he'd always send me uh, different uh, uh, economic newsletters and tracks that there was kind of the modern internet back then. And one of them was American Institute for Economic Research. And uh, I love just gobble up their articles all the time. Uh, I was also, um, uh, and there were other economic newsletters that I followed. I mean, there was Foundation for Economic Education. They, they, they do a great educational thing. And uh, uh, so, you know, that's, that's where my ideas developed. And then I, you know, I became convinced of re reinstituting a gold standard. So independently, I said, okay, gold was legalized. And, you know, my, I read E.C. Harwood and uh, uh, the lost art of sound commercial banking. And I, I made a gold coin with his likeness on it. In fact, it's right here. And yeah. I think the first thing we did in, in 1979. And basically I used the same alloy that was, yeah. which camera? This one, that one, this one, my camera right there. Okay. Oops, I need to get it there. There it is. That's a better shot. And yeah, then the backside, this might look familiar. It's actually got the coin flip. So you flip it instead of turn it. I, I put a, that's called a coin flip, not a metal. This is because you flip it. If you turn it, that would be a metal. But this was actually, we did it with a coin, but we couldn't call it a coin. So we call it the Harwood gold piece. And uh, subsequent to that, then I started minting other gold coins. Uh, I was actually the first one to decimalize the troy ounce. And uh, uh, the other uh, uh, people that I knew, I, I worked, I knew Ron Paul way back when he first entered Congress. Uh, we actually worked together on different things, but I was a big follower of, of John Robbins, who was a Christian uh, scholar and uh, was writing, uh, basically trying to, to establish a foundation for Christian economics. And so, and he wrote an article called The Bible and the Draft, which was, which is still available on the Trinity Foundation. So that's how I got introduced. He was another one of my mentors. And so uh, uh, my philosophy, uh, monetary philosophy is, is uh, based on uh, a lot of the free market thinkers, but from a very, uh, you know, we believe, uh, you know, in presuppositionalism that that I don't consider Christianity a religion. It's simply uh, a way. Uh, it's it's systematic truth that you know we're created in in God's image, and and He speaks to us in a way that we can understand, which is the logic of God, the Word of God. And uh, I realize it's a stumbling stone for a lot of people, uh, and it was for me. I mean, uh, <clears throat> one of my early uh, uh, philosophers I loved and read was Herbert Bakunin, who was a communist back in, in Russia. And, and he, his idea was, was, you know, if God does exist, he should be destroyed. And I thought that was exactly right. I think he's right on. Uh, the problem with that is the very beginning presupposition. You're starting out if. That's a very strong statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a strong one. But as I say, but it's based on a presupposition of conditional existence uh, in your own head or your own mind. And, uh, you know, so and that's where I do disagree a lot with the current movement. There, I know the current movement is is uh, influenced substantially by uh, the uh, Mises Institute, which they really put out a lot of good material. I use it all the time, but they really, their background, if you study where they came from, it's from, from Lou Rockwell and Murray Rothbart. And uh, that's where I kind of was put on the map because 
when I read the case for a hundred percent gold standard, I wrote an article about it because I had my own newsletter then and I called him a gold socialist. And I just mailed out this newsletter. That was it. But somehow Milton Friedman got a hold of it. I get this letter from you know, why am I getting a letter from who is dude? And who's this Milton Friedman? <laughs> So he sent me an article. Uh, I guess I stirred the pot. And then F.A. Hayek wrote me, you know, and, and uh, you know, that kind of went from there. And, of course, uh, so I'm a big student from, you know, Mises, of Manger, Mises, uh, and Hayek. I mean, I don't uh, – I, I love Milton Friedman's free market economics, but he was a monetarist. He, he thought there should be uh, an inflation, a fixed inflation, I think it was 5% or whatever. So all of these things still exist today, all of these arguments, all these debates, and it takes a while to sort it all out. It took me a long time when I first, you know, got into Bitcoin. I said, yeah, competition currency. Yeah, we can have competing private standards. You know, but then I did more and more research and, you know, interesting, Hayek never envisioned it that way. You know, he saw, uh, and he later on, I found an obscure article where he actually wrote about it. He actually said, no, this competition in currencies, it's not going to be used as cash. And it's not going to be, uh, you know, could, it's going to be used uh, by merchants, you know, outside of governments. And there the, the be one standard. The competition is going so, to be on that standard. So outside of standards, so that means you're kind of an uh, Austrian economics guy, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I just, I, I'm not at the, the school uh, uh, of Murray Rothbard. I'm definitely in the school of F.A. Hayek uh, and Mises. I think Mises is consistent with Hayek. I think Rothbard is very inconsistent. And I think the center is this, is that uh, Rothbard actually authored the uh, idea and is the founder of the anarcho-capitalist movement. And I think the foundation, the presupposition of anarcho-capitalism is the sovereignty of the individual. Uh, and as a Christian, we don't believe in the sovereignty of the individual. We believe in the sovereignty of God. And so that's the sovereignty, but that doesn't diminish our responsibilities or roles because we are created in his image. So these are important foundations, I think, for the development of where sound money is going to go, particularly if you're going to claim it's from a Christian point of view. Now, you don't need to come from a Christian point of view. I mean, as far as living a life, I know a lot of non-Christians are a lot more moral than I ever have been or ever will be. I mean, they live example exemplary lives. But that's not what, you know, the gospel is all about. So, uh, uh, but I'm not here, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not an evangelist, <laughs> but, but I'm here to present my view in a consistent way uh, because you, we have a lot of, uh, Bitcoin has a lot of in-house debate, a lot of different views, and we don't have to disagree to really examine these issues. And that's why I'm so excited. You know, I'm able, I got a great story because I, bought my first when i my, my son had told me about i'd heard about bitcoin when it first started and when it was first got some was valued at something and then i heard about it when it went over a dollar and of course i heard about it when they, they had the that, that default there in cyprus wherever it was and finally my son just sent me stuff i said okay i gotta look at this and so i you know that was in august and i could you know once i saw it and i got it I couldn't, of course, get enough of it. I probably spent, couldn't sleep for, for <laughs> at least 24 hours or longer and started digging all I can. I said, yeah, this is, this is really new. This is, this is, this is something, a new technology that we haven't had before. Now I made all kinds of other mistakes too, and I'm sure I'm still making them, but uh, you know, one of the first things was, yeah, we can have competing, you know, the first thing, oh, well, I think they can be done better, but the, that's the difference we we have bitcoin the technology and we have bitcoin the standard and i do think uh from all at least the econ the best economic theor theoretician which i think was f a hayek and he pretty well outlined no this is going to uh, uh the competition will be in uh uh this one standard and it will actually compete with uh with uh, jurisdictional uh, fiat currencies by government currencies. And I think, sir, I don't think you're going to get rid of the nation states. I think that, that you're, the governments are still going to have their own money, and that's fine. Uh, the biggest risk I see for Bitcoin, Bitcoin hollers now, you know, years ago, back in 2012, 13, uh, 
for when I got started, the biggest risk was exchange risk. And I don't think that's the case anymore. I think the exchanges are, are pretty solid. Uh, now, there might be an occasional one. That there's problems with it. Uh, but I think the real risk is your jurisdictional risk. And whatever jurisdiction you're in, I mean, if you're sitting in the United States and your security, uh, your retirement is based on the equity in your home uh, and based on your retirement account that's in a legacy system, uh, you're extremely vulnerable, Yeah, extremely vulnerable. And uh, that's what you need to protect. That's what Bitcoin serves. And of course, that's why I'm in Mexico. <laughs> so I don't want to be in the United States. <laughs> That doesn't mean the United States can come in and reach me. I'm extraditable, but I don't want to make it any easier on them. <laughs> and uh, okay, so and they can still hit me with a drone. At some point, you change your views from the gold standard to the Bitcoin standard, right? You start well, you started I'm to forced, believe yeah. more at the uh, on the Bitcoin standard. I'm forced, I think what's real important is I'm a sound money advocate. Okay, gold is sound money. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it still is. I don't have a problem. And I, that's why I'm a little bit, those that diminish the, you know, if you read a safety in Amos, he says, Hey, if you want to really attack Bitcoin, just restore the gold standard. If, if the nation start readopting the, you know, there's no, we don't need it anymore, but they can't because uh, the fundamentals for Bitcoin they're they're not, I have to take the back end, the techno technology. I just have to accept from good guys that I trust like Jimmy song, you know, and other people that, that outline the back. Cause I don't get, I, you know, I don't program. I, I, I barely, I need mouse lessons. So that's how bad my technology is, but I do understand sound money. And I understand the problems that we're facing now in this particular generation. And the macro fundamentals is what my, uh, mentor, you see Harwood, he called the three greatest swindles in the history of mankind. And they're all alive and well, blooming bigger than ever. And the number one, of course, is inflation. And, uh, you know, it just robs everyone's wealth and, and favors a few uh, because they're the first ones that, that get the money. I think that's one of the blessings of COVID because I think people are waking up. Wow. If they could just deposit money in my account, they can take it out just as easy. Yep. That's exactly right. That's where the risk is now, isn't it? And then the second, the second part is uh, uh, the second risk is saying he called, he identified it as social security. It's the second greatest swindle, but I think that was written 50 years ago and that was a primary entitlement. But now we have so many more entitlements that it's just permeates and is widespread everywhere. And so that's a huge, and, you know, it's not getting better. And then the last thing was uh, he called the third greatest swindle. He called the SEC because he got, he started the American Institute. He got people in the gold, you know, through Swiss trust. It was all legal, but they tried to shut him down. It's a great story to read about. And he fought and fought. It cost him a fortune, but he was really a man's man. And, and, and fought those guys and won. And uh, uh, so he called the SEC as the third greatest swindle, which I say, well, you know, it's really just regulation. And, you know, when that happened, the CFTC wasn't even in existence. How many new bureaucracies and regulatory, you know, <laughs> bureaucracies have we created now? So that's the big issue. The really big issue, the case for Bitcoin is, you know, the, the three greatest swindles and all three of those swindles are initiated and carried out by government. That's the issue. So until there has to be a, a change in the hearts and minds of people, uh, and then governments will finally follow. So, uh, I'm for a, a sound, you know, I'm for sound money. I think gold can be a sound money was in fact, even in my day, a lot of people and today, they don't, they don't really understand the gold standard and it actually evolved organically, just like Bitcoin. They didn't even know they were doing it. I think at the time, but they created this thing called uh, self liquidating commercial paper where the money supply is actually regulated, both the increase and the decrease by the marketplace through and the, basically the bankers were producers. Now they might've been bankers eventually, but most of them started out of producing some kind of wealth. And then that, as you produce that wealth, that production can be, can be part of the 
you can collateralize money from that because as that you, you create the money, it's not ex nihilo because you, you, you have to estimate the value of those goods and services coming into the marketplace. And you literally create, you, they put a, 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 a lien or they had different ways of doing, but, but they basically attach the property, the, the production that's being produced, create the money and then loan the money, create it, give it to the producer. He would pay his suppliers, pay his employees. And so then these people can go into the marketplace and they can buy gold with it, or they can buy widgets or that. I mean, it, they could buy automobiles or that, but they were producing all kinds of new inventions back uh, during that gilded age. And all these things came into place and came into being. Now you could make, you could make some bad investments. I mean, I don't think you'd be a very, uh, uh, sound bank if you're loaning money to you know buggy whip manufacturers because that was a pretty much they, they still make buggy whips but not like they used to i guarantee <laughs> okay let's let's um so sound money could be gold could be bitcoin but you decided to go bitcoin 100 percent so well, sound Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin is distinguishable because it does it has a, the characteristics of gold without a lot of the 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 drawbacks of gold. And of course, the number one thing is, it is you know it's a digital thing, and you have possession of it, but the possession is a bunch of numbers. And like I say, so it's very important. It's not your Bitcoin you know not not what is it not your address not your bitcoin not, you know not your keys not not, not your yeah. keys not your bitcoin yeah exactly so and, so basically the number exactly the number right. one is unconfiscatable right exactly and that's exactly how i explained bitcoin to people and it was tyler jenks and and tone vase that really uh, nailed that for me i uh, tone says he was before tyler jenks but that'll be a part of the dispute but tone, tone's got that phrase and he actually got the the domain name i'm unconfiscatable and that's how i explained bitcoin i all you need to do is uh, and, and i you know i used to give away bitcoin and all this stuff to try and i i don't think that the solution is going to come through remittance, banking the unbanked. I don't think it's going to come from institutional investors. It's going to come from the producers. And the way I define it, there's two kinds of entrepreneurs. There's entrepreneurs that have Bitcoin like me, and there's entrepreneurs that don't. And as these all these producers come in and start, you, this is going to be the driving force. This is what's going to make it work. And, uh, uh, that's why I'm, I'm still, you know, a, a lot of these things I don't understand. I'm still trying to figure out lightning. I'm not convinced it's necessary. Yet. I mean, because one of the things I've been taught is, well, it can be done better just, you know, on a Excel spreadsheet. So we don't, you, know, you don't need the lightning. I understand why it's there, but, you know, what, some of these are really, it, we're going to find out. But my emphasis is that a lot of these issues that uh, I know what I really like on, the, the thread that you were doing is, is the reaction five to one people thought legal tender are good laws and legal tender, uh, uh, is in our constitution. So it's, you know, but our constitution's a flawed document. I mean, it, it also slavery is in there too. Well, we were able to get rid of slavery. And I think a legitimate question is, is a legal tender uh, another idea that maybe shouldn't be in the Constitution? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, <laughs> I, and, but because I see all these Bitcoin, oh yeah, now we're going to make Bitcoin legal tender. Well, yeah, but but you, and, and uh, Selgin really addressed these, his, and Selgin's, yeah, that's, that's something that kind of made me a little angry because some of my friends, oh, you know, Sullivan's a hater and he hates Bitcoin and, and he's not, he's, I've known the guy, I was reading him 40, 50, he's, you know, years ago, he's a sound money guy through and through free market money guy. Uh, yeah. He's a Bitcoin skeptic. I, we have to be, and I get tired of these people saying Bitcoins, uh, you know, is, 
is cash. And I say it's lousy cash and it sucks as a store of value. You can't tell me Bitcoin's a store of value when you bought it last January, February. Tell that to somebody that bought it at 50 or $60,000 and ask them, oh, isn't it a great store of value? <laughs> no, that, that doesn't fly. Well, I guess, and then I guess everyone- it, See how easy that is. I guess everyone was a Bitcoin skeptic at the beginning. I was a Bitcoin skeptic. Yeah, you should yeah, be. In, in and 2015, you should continue to be. <laughs> I, I started to hear bit, uh, Bitcoin, the word Bitcoin around 2015. I was a skeptic during that year. So I guess everyone starts to be a skeptic. So that's not different from, uh, you know, some guy just buying no. now. and. Yeah, skepticism is healthy and good. It really is. And I don't have a problem with it that. It protects but, you. But in, it does, and, and, and it's healthy, good debate. Uh, so, uh, and I'm all for ad hominem attacks. You know, like name calling is great, but the, in order to be to be valid, it has to be it has to meet two criteria. Number one it has to be true, and then number number one it has to be true. Number two it has to be relevant, because people can bring up all kinds of things of my past, but that's really not relevant to the issue of Bitcoin, but, but if it's, you know, by the same token, if I'm wrong or something and it's true, then, then you definitely want, want to bring that up because that's how we change. I mean, our views, uh, uh, this is a word I call Bitcoin a worthy speculation. In fact, it's so worthy. You don't want to be without it. You want to uh, have, <laughs> yeah. What about the it's other ones? What about Not being in Bitcoin. <laughs> what about the other ones? What's your thoughts? What are your thoughts about altcoins or shit coins? If you want to call them that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 they're, they're completely superfluous. Uh, and I, I was, I was, I trade them. I have no problem trading them. I don't own it. I love BitMEX because you can actually trade them without touching them. <laughs> so I think yeah, they they provide an arbitrage opportunity. But yeah, I think they're. I I think that's going to be the biggest problem uh, with uh, uh, that Bitcoin is going to have to overcome. We're going to just the, the altcoins are going to have to just be devastated to for people to really get it through their head about, about how. Awful. They, they are just. It's just. Shitcoins are just delaying the revolution. By the way, right? Yeah, they are, and there's more more than that. But they're yeah, there is delaying things. It's not going to stop anything. But just there's some. It, it shows that there's some really hard lessons that have to be learned, and uh, uh, the honest people will will learn it. And those that are you know are taking advantage of, of Bitcoin and, and riding on the Bitcoin coattails. I mean, they're just, they're opportunists and, you know, that's, I, I, I do think that there's a huge shakeout coming there and uh, it, it won't have, it will have consequences on Bitcoin too, but Bitcoin, Bitcoin will get through it if it is what, you know, we say it is and what I think it is, it's the longest, you know, uh, chain with proof of work and it's secure there's not going to be any more made I, I i just hate some of the terms that are being used i hate calling bitcoin having an inflation rate because it doesn't have an inflation rate there's 21 million of them and they, some of them are already lost so if anything it's got a deflation rate we just don't know what it is there's a delayed um, issuance that's the way i call it but that's not inflating inflating is cr creating purchasing media out of nothing with nothing there with no security or collateral that's inflating the money supply um miners aren't inflating bitcoin that's not a, that's not an inflation rate and really uh you need to go back to the definition of terms and inflation is creating money uh without any corresponding backing to it and the art of, of the commercial. So I don't think the goals of Bitcoin will be reached until we develop, we understand and, and develop and relearn what E.C. Howard called the lost art of commercial banking. It's lost. We forgot about it. It was never recorded because it happened so quickly and nobody really got what was going on there, but it, it actually evolved. And then once it was so good that, oh, this is so good, let's nationalize it. And that's what, so there's a big difference between gold and the gold standard. And Murray Rothbard, you read his book, he was for a hundred percent gold reserve standard and he would impose it on an entire nation. And if you didn't have a hundred percent gold reserve, no matter what you say, it's fraud. 
Well, that's really a gold exchange standard, a gold warehousing operation. Banking evolves separately, and they learn how to create non-inflationary purchasing media. The market literally controlled the market supply. It literally re created the notes and retired the notes. So all within the marketplace, so which is just a hard concept because we just, it was su such as blooming flowers so, so for a very brief period of time that, uh, you know, we, that, and that's what I see the danger is with, with the, uh, you know, the Bitcoin legal tender. And I, I, I don't, I'm not all celebratory. I mean, I get it. Everybody was really excited and I don't want to dampen the enthusiasm. I'm not out here. I think, you know, how can you, how can you watch Jack Maller and not your heart. Yeah. yeah the guy's, you know, he's, yeah. um, he's yeah. a, he has the same kind of enthusiasm that Roger Veer had when it first started, but that doesn't make that, that can also get us in a lot of trouble, but I don't want to damper that, but, but we have to, just tamper it. I mean, let's, really you were just talking issues. about inflation. What do you think about what Christine Lagarde said recently? Uh, I don't remember if this was yesterday, uh, but she was going to welcome some more inflation in the Eurozone. Have you heard about this? No, I, they're always welcoming inflation. Why wouldn't you? Because they have been you trying know. to stop the inflation at the eurozone, but now she well, says well, now, now we what, need what more you, inflation. What are you talking? But what do you mean by inflation? I mean that's that's the problem. We have to define term. I define inflation as creating money out of nothing. Now mo a lot of people we change that to inflation is price increases. So you really have to be careful. What when you say this? What was she talking about? What was she talking about creating money, or was she talking well, about price? The only way I know to create inflation is to print more money. Right. That's the only way to create well, that, inflation. <laughs> right. But but the in, in the common language now, most people think of inflation as price increasing. They, they, they're looking at the, the uh, result and not the root cause. We're all under the classic economics. We just we understood. Uh, now you have to just be careful on all the definitions. You just you know, I, I really don't know. I, I really, you know, I don't focus on all the, these uh, uh, globalists and whatever they're doing. I, I, I've got enough things to focus on in my little conference. <laughs> so, you know, I, I got to take care of the little things around here first. But, but and I try and illustrate it. And the way that I illustrate it was, you know, the very first, I started buying Bitcoin in 2013 of, in August. It was my first uh uh, I didn't even have the money. I was because I had a small business and I was always, you know, buying equipment and building that business. And so I was always really tight on the funds. But I said, man, I got to get some of this. So uh, I bought my first 10 through Coinbase. And at the time, you know, you could do it through an ACH. So I could cover it with my overdraft protection. And uh, that's how I got my, my first Bitcoin. And then I remember when they first started, all they had, I think, was Bitcoin, maybe Litecoin. But I think just Bitcoin when I started and uh, they recommended buying 10. So I bought 10, you know, and then the store I sell, you know, it, you know, I, tr I trade Bitcoin too. That's not kind of known for I, in, in 2017, I was in the top 10 notational. And, and then in 2018, I, I was just, I wasn't, I just going flat. I wasn't getting anywhere in my trading. So I said, you know what? I need to take a break and uh, started writing medium articles and I, everybody gets known in the space for different reasons. That's how, you know, I almost immediately I started writing these articles. I had like 5,000, three or four, 5,000 followers and somebody then tone base picked up. I got some more. Yeah. I, and, I basically uh, got to know you when, when you started to appear on tone base show. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And he believed, you know, I, I, I take my hat cause I think so much of him and he actually, you know, he believed me what, because I, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm a very credible person, except my experience. Uh, I think over time I become more credible and, and, but he saw, you know, what I, I sent him my track record. And I said, this is what I do. And here's what I've done in the past. And here's who I am. But, you know, I don't want to, I hurt a lot of people in my past and, and, and I'm not proud of it. Uh, uh, it's, it's a shame well-deserved. 
And uh, that's why I also have a heart for a lot of these sh shit corners. I, you know, I don't want anybody to go through what I went through. And uh, so I, I'm not, I, I'm not pointing a finger in condemnation. I will, if they know better and they're doing it anyway, but a lot of these guys are jumping on. They, they really believe in what the, I think there was somebody that was what, an ambassador of one of these exchanges or shit coin that was on. I got involved in that tweet, but I, you know, I'm uh, the guy thinks he's, he's on to something and helping other people and not really even realizing what he's into at all. And it sometimes it just takes time for people to wake up to, Oh, I get it now. What is sound money? And that's why uh, I came very quickly to the defense of George Selton, because I know he's a sound money advocate. I, <laughs> and for, for somebody that's just a Bitcoiner only and doesn't know the whole history of this thing to say that, oh, he's an enemy of Bitcoin. No, that's not true. And so, you know, I'm, I can't let somebody be, be defamed like that. And so we have to be careful, you know, on, on these things. And everybody has a different view. And, and we have some great scholarship. I mean, uh, Selgin and, and Safe it in had a, a debate, a great debate, you know, and uh, these are good, hard money issues, you know, uh, that, that need to be discussed, need to be debated. There's going to be a variety of opinions. That's also, you know, what the markets are for. So, and I really uh, appreciated your thread on the legal tender because you addressed it and where you really hit a home run in my mind is when you said, you know what? The law doesn't say should, it says ought. Man, if I had that conversation earlier, you'd be, I'd, you'd have an invitation to be a panelist here. Cause I think you really uh, nailed that thing, uh, particularly with, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not uh, proficient in my Spanish, but you know, I thought that was really interesting when you said, Hey, that's not really, it, it's not a, it's not a shall, it's an ought, I think is the way you kind of put it. Something else in legalese term and, and English. No, actually, there's a difference. Actually, the translation, the translation to English says must accept. And when I was reading the Spanish one, it's actually deberá, which means should accept. So it's... Yes, uh, that's a big difference. Yeah, big, huge. <laughs> yeah, big difference, man. That's I, that, that's, I mean, yeah, should or ought. It doesn't say shall. Shall is must. Exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's huge. And, you know, if you studied the law, which I have, because I was locked up 11 years with the law library and didn't have a whole lot of anything else to do. And, uh, you know, I realized that there's a difference between sh should and shall and, and you know, should. Should and yeah. you know, should. yeah, and, 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 and that makes shall, me that, th that makes me think about who translated that, and what agenda was behind all that translation, and then you know American economists started to pick it up and and start to discuss this and saying that this is against all the liberalism that Bitcoin actually should promote and people should adopt it on free will and not forced and stuff like that, but. Uh, let's let's just go just a bit uh, before that. Let's go to the adoption of Bitcoin in El Salvador. So this all started because some rich guy that found this uh, wallet, long lost wallet, and he found out that he had billions in Bitcoin. And he asked someone in El Salvador, how should he help the people there? So this guy, I, I forgot his name now, went to El Salvador and started all that thing about the Bitcoin bitch and, and, and all okay, that. Yeah, and yeah. then Jack I didn't, I'm comes. not aware. I'm learning. You're teaching me. I didn't yeah. know all this history. Yeah, I, I was. Know. Yeah, well, wow. You, Where can I find this history? You need to write. <laughs> you need to write an article outlining this thing because you're you're more up on this uh, than anybody, man. I was. Well, I was just. I, think, I was just researching on the internet yeah, how how this all started and basically. Really. Yeah, this was some guy that had this wallet for a long time. He didn't know that it was there, and then he actually was able to find the keys and then he found out he had some thousands of bitcoins there uh bought you know 2011 2010 something like that so anyway so this guy wanted to give something back to the community and he asked someone uh how how could i help those people in el salvador and so this all thing started so i read this online so you can search for the you know the genesis of this 
uh, Bitcoin Beach uh, thing. And then Jack Maller well, comes. I, yeah. I like, I want to you write an article on it and put the reference on there. Make it easy on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll take this to a new level. This, I know this is good stuff. Uh, I wasn't familiar with all that history and, and I don't pretend to be a scholar. I, I'm a semi, I'm a lay scholar. How's that? <laughs> but, but, uh, well, I can, uh, I can search yeah, the link that, again and then send it back to you. So, uh, and you can read all this about oh, all this. You yes. got me curious now. I'll probably like, I got spare time to thank you for, for, it's like me jumping on, on, of course, the guy, I dump on him all the of course no one knows who this guy is because he wants to remain anonymous and he just donated the money to start that, but he imposed one condition. And the condition was that this was supposed to help those people, but they could never exchange the Bitcoin for dollars. So that's how they created this, you know, ecosystem where they have to spend the Bitcoin in that village. Okay. All right. So this is how all started. They could not exchange it for dollars. They had to use the Bitcoin to buy stuff, to live out of it. Cool. And so, so this was the only condition he imposed to give some millions to those people there to start the ecosystem. Yeah. And you know, that's a challenge because, you know, I live, we, we live in Mexico. My wife, uh, comes from a very, you know, a, she was poverty stricken girl. I had a very hard life, very, very difficult. And, uh, uh, we actually lived in, in Zorio, which is kind of the, the uh, ghetto of, of Ensenada. Uh, it's, it's actually, yeah, I interpreted Surreal as skunk. <laughs> so you can imagine. <laughs> they, they call it uh, something else. Uh, the, Canyon Buena Vista. No, well, Canyon Buena Vista, but it's not, you know, it's, 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 it's well, known. well known as a real. But that was always our, I mean, we, you, and, you know, how do you help? And, uh, Eddie, you probably ought to get in on this because they, and a lot of, for example, these so-called Christian missionaries, they'll come and they'll build people a little house and they all, have, and boy, they can become Christians. It's like conversion like that till, till they get that house and then, and, then, and, then, sell it. and then they sell the house, you know, or whatever. But so I know there was a lot of these altruistic things that we think we were doing to help people. It's not helping them in the least. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, how well, do well, you, what, what he actually wanted to create was a system where people would be introduced to a new currency and then, I get it. and also at the same time, be educated about it. So they had to create this whole infrastructure where they have classes and they teach people how to use their wallets on the phone and stuff like that. So, and they had to use it as an alternative currency in that village and that worked yeah. pretty well because Jack Mallers went there and they also introduced them to the, you know, lightning network and they started to be able to buy coffee with Bitcoin because if not using the lightning network, then it would be very expensive. So that's right. why they started to educate everyone and even older people like uh, above 60 years old people and they learned how to use it and they use it now. And that was what caught the attention of the government. And that at that point, when Bukele wanted to speak to Mallers to know how to introduce Bitcoin in the country, not just the village, but the entire country. And, uh -huh. and, and that was at that point that everything started in El Salvador. But now, well, you know, that's a great story. And I, I know I'm familiar with the situation, somewhat familiar with the situation down there because it was prevalent 40 years ago. We go to a Ron Paul uh, invite meeting up there you know, on sound money. And there was a delegation from San, San Salvador and they were just outlining, yeah, here's our problem. At. And, and, uh, so, you know, I mean, what a tremendous thing it would be if, if, you know, San Salvador lifts itself up through Bitcoin by the bootstraps and it really becomes the new, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong of, uh, of, Central or even South America of, of, of the Americas. I mean, because the United States is getting to be the point where I don't see any end, end to the decline. I don't, I don't see, you know, maybe somebody sees a silver lining somewhere. I don't. And that's why I'm here. You know, this is my silver lining. And, and I think there's more hope for people you know, I in, living down here in Mexico and seeing the culture and the the difference in they are far less socialized here in Mexico, particularly in the Baja, than anywhere in the United States. 
and the thinking they when they with they they're industrious they work six days a week uh you know and everybody and i mean yeah you still got your your bad elements in society but it you know there's no nursing homes down here you know the the uh uh, they take care of their old people within their families. I, and I did, I, my, I grew up with the first family where grandma was put in the nursing home. We, they never did that before. Uh, you know, I was, uh, and my, my, on one side of my family, my, my grandparents were able to live till, you know, to an old age all on their own. But, but I had one grandmother became you know severely disabled but rather than we we put them off to the side rather than incorporate them in the family and uh that's one of the strengths down here that i see it's just uh th there's a much more compassionate there's much more uh, uh they want to get to know you and and it's really how you carry yourself even though i don't know the language i'm i'm well known uh, hopefully because i'm carrying myself decently <laughs> but uh, you know, I, that's but let's, the, uh, let's discuss a bit about El Salvador. And then so they introduced the law. This was really fast. And of course, with Jack Mueller's help, uh, helping the president to write the law, as he said, in Miami, uh, because I guess he even the president had to be educated about Bitcoin a bit more. We right? all, yeah, we all do. And I guess I'm, yeah, I get it. It was a brave and bold move. I mean, at the very audacious, yeah. you know, was and it wise? Is, and, yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> and still is. And this is exactly after the law mm. was published. And this is still not uh, in force, actually. So they gave this 90 day I, period. I understand. I understand. And, there's, and, and so I think that's good because we're having this discussion. And that's one of the topics that we're going to be having at our, our conference. And I think it's really a good discussion. Legal tender, should it be embraced or abolished? I don't have the answer to that question. You yeah, know, but I was, I was going to ask you something different. It, but now I'm beginning to wonder, well, maybe not. I mean, it is in our Constitution. I, it's an open debate as far as I'm concerned. But I was going to ask you that just recently they asked for the IMF help to introduce, you know, to... Uh, all the technicals of introducing Bitcoin as a uh, legal tender and currency. And the IMF said, well, we are not available to help you guys because, you know, there are concerns about the environment and stuff and we don't really support Bitcoin. So what's what's your what do you think about the IMF answer about this when they have when actually the context is they have enormous amounts of energy with the volcano stuff? Oh, I, get, I understand all that. I had my good friend, you know, Flip Flop Ron came and visited me. We were talking about it. He says, yeah, you know, I hope he's, you know, he, he's basically putting his life on the line. I mean, the, the, the history of anybody that falls out of line uh, in in Latin America is is the history of, of you know, we take them out. And, it, you know, we took out Norega and we take all the any of the drug dealers that think they can operate separately from our government. And if you don't think the United States government is the biggest drug dealer in the world, you don't understand anything. <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> I know. I know that argument. Well, I know. You know, I, I can't, I'm not, you're helpless. You know, we look. And just, and just a few it. days ago in, in Haiti. The president was killed. Yeah, I guess we will never know who was behind that, but we have strong suspicions. <laughs> well, and you know they had these drone ca capabilities now, so they you just can all of a sudden disappear. You know, poop, and they I don't know where you went. You just kind of evaporated, and I, I guess these are the new aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but that makes me wonder what what do you think is the real reason why the IMF does not want to support this? I don't really know, and I could care less. You know, I do know that when the IMF was selling gold, I was buying gold. I was buying it from the IMF. So I don't know why you'd want to partner with them anyway. It's not going to help you in any way. Uh, if anything, you want to break that partnership. You know, if anything, we want to. You know, why? Why do we have? Why does the United States have all these stations all over the world? We don't need to be there, and uh, we. You know, we we fundamentally changed uh, in order to do what we're doing now in the world. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's very, very sad. No, I, and, I'm, uh, I was asking this because there's a legal implication to, you know, the IMF lent some money to El Salvador and then 
when El Salvador, according to the regulations of the IMF, if a country has legal tender, Bitcoin as legal tender, they are allowed to repay the debt with that Bitcoin. And in fact, if the currency itself values more than the debt, they have to give it back. So this is in the regulations of the IMF. And this was, uh, you well, know, this guy. Yeah, maybe that could very well be, you know, an avenue to get uh, out from underneath the thumb of the IMF. Uh, if you can trust them that far. I mean, <laughs> if they're going to live up to that agreement. Well, here, we don't owe you anything anymore. We'll give you a little Bitcoin, you know. And, uh, you know, because that is how it works. I mean, that's what I teach. When I started my website, Bitcoin was $3,500. I did it for with $35,000 to build a website. And I started this, uh, this thing and it, it, you know, it was viable. We didn't get rid of it, but I got my 10 Bitcoin back. And then we did a working man's Bitcoin cruise and same thing happened. Now we're doing this big uh, Bitcoin standard conference event with the same 10 Bitcoin, but that 10 Bitcoin is worth a lot more than, uh, you know, back way back oh, yeah. when, when I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, so now I can, you know, this is, this is how we're producing wealth. This is what Bitcoiners are about. This is why, you know, we are going to set the standard. We are going to uh, having, an, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's going to, well, we're still thoroughly corrupt human beings. So we're going to make lots of mistakes, but, but, but it, we have honest money now, which is the game changer. It changes everything. And it, it, the perspective is just, it's, it is a much longer term perspective. And so, yeah, I see huge potential down there that they didn't have before. And I hope it's a miracle. I really hope that it's the shining gem that, you know, I'll be going down there. I, I got to go check it out now. I, I want to go down there. I've been talking to some people here already saying I need to go to El Salvador and see it in place. Yeah, I <laughs> Because I think it's amazing. Agree. It's a great form of introducing Bitcoin to the world. So yes. even, you know, just not, not relating to the country itself, but in comparison or regarding well, the you world. know how bad it was down there because it was absolutely the world's basket case i mean it maybe it was probably one level up from haiti yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think as, yeah. as a great advertisement for bitcoin this is working very well and the you know the world is now maybe looking at bitcoin in the in a different way i guess it's the, yeah, it's the, and that's what it is. It's the discussion. It's the narrative. We've got control of the narrative, which is really important. But let's go back. Uh, let, you know, let's go back to that thread that we were discussing on Twitter. Uh, we still have some time, so don't worry about that. Let's discuss the Article 7 thing that you invited me to that uh -huh. thread. So I, I believe that at start you were a bit against the Article 7, and then you changed your mind a bit, I guess. But why do you think that Article 7 should be discussed, even should be discussed by people outside of El Salvador? Well, uh, what do you mean? I, I don't, I mean, it was fine if we discuss it outside of what, what I wanted to, I think my, one of my biggest objections, we want to make sure it's inside. Because I did get a couple no, of tweets. No, I mean, I mean, yeah, we don't want you Americans coming down here and running our country. You know what? I get that. You know, I don't want to be the, you know, and, and, you know, so you got to be careful. I mean, it has a history of being a banana, <laughs> banana republic. We don't want a Bitcoin republic to be like a banana republic, you know, so that's the challenge. Yeah, because the <laughs> idea, the idea that, you know, there's this idea around the world that the United States likes to go everywhere and try to interfere with everything. So this is El Salvador. They are a sovereign country. They have their own laws. Why should we be discussing this in the first place? Uh, well, I think it became a discussion once they decided to make it legal tender because that got me questioning and I'm questioning the, again, I'm que questioning the whole legal tender issue. I think it's a worthy discussion. I mean, I would love to have Ron Paul in on this discussion right now. Yeah. I, that would really, no, I'm serious. 
Well, maybe we're, maybe we're we should do any, another one. <laughs> maybe you should do another one with Ron Paul. Well, <laughs> I, I think it'd be great. I, we, let's show him this thing and see. I, and Ron knows me. I mean, he knows me from way back when. So, uh, it, John Robbins, who was one of my mentors, he ran Ron Paul initial uh, office for for years. And uh, uh, John's a, uh, a great intellect, but he's passed. He passed before Bitcoin. He passed on I think two thousand eight or something. But but yeah, I I just think it's a great uh debate and i think there's some other people i think jimmy song uh you know he had a pretty good answer i can't remember exact words and i don't want to put i don't want to paraphrase it if i can't do it accurately but i do think uh uh i mean how can you not be excited about it you you, you just can't and I mean, so, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm just playing devil's advocate well, here, so don't don't exactly don't take me wrong. Yeah, I just want to know your opinion why this should be discussed. It it yeah, well I because it's is revolu because it's Bitcoin and it is very revolutionary and you know that's why I'm not here to condemning what they're doing now. I get it, you know. If, you know if, if we had, I guess you know we had the power we would impose it and that's what bitcoiners are doing and okay but you know i'm just expressing some caution here you know i did a poll and five to one uh people think it should be embraced and not abolished okay so overwhelming people yeah, but in you, the bitcoin you community actually, but you, you actually asked me shouldn't we just leave it like that and remove article seven from there I remember you said this at the beginning of that discussion. Yeah, and I, I, but it's the Article Seven that what what phrase is it that was in, is it Article Seven that was mis, mistranslated? Yeah, yeah. Which, what, yeah. Well, I think you pretty well have have the argument right there. Because in my point of view, I, that okay. needs to be that needs to be I, that needs to be developed. This is a this is not a shall. This is a, a an ought. That's a big difference. You really redefine legal tender. Yeah, but let's and just if you, let's if you read George Salzman. It's, it's different. If, if you read George Salzman, he says, you know, that's the difference. But it's, it's not a debt either. What they're talking about is actual cash transactions that it must. But if you're saying no, it not doesn't must, but it ought. That's important distinction. It really is. You yeah, know, and I don't know. I, I, I don't, I'm not a translator. I, you know, I really don't know. I'm, I, I'm taking you at face value that you got the translation down and we're all screwed up here speaking English. Well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a Spanish native speaker, but I am Portuguese. So it's very, very right. close. It's just one letter different, but. But incidentally, I want to visit Portugal someday. So I, when I do, I'm going to look you up. <laughs> and you will I've, be very, I've, very welcome here for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I would lo I'd love to visit Portugal. It's a great but, time. We're going to be going uh, yeah, go ahead. But the main point no, I was, gonna... I, I wanted to summarize the discussion we had on Twitter. So my main point was, of course, the translation. But there was a second point I made there. I wanted to try to pass this, but I guess um, uh, Selgin, right? Selgin did not. Selgin. Yeah, he did not go for it uh, very easily. So my point is. No, he's not going to come off his point. Very easy. No, yeah. I get that. <laughs> Which, you know, that you know. But my second point was 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 as follows. So you actually you have to allow your customer to pay you in bitcoin but you are not requested to keep the bitcoin and in fact if you configure your wallet it will automatically transform the bitcoin into dollars when it gets to your wallet so how can anyone say even if this was must accept how can anyone really say that by the time the transaction is completed if they get I, if they get US dollars in the wallet, how can anyone say that they are uh, forced to I accept get Bitcoin? That. And I also I also get Jack Maller. You know, Jack Maller is no dummy. He's come up some a huge a, a, a background of a commodities trade. He understands the marketplace, and for him to be doing this, it's a tremendous arbitrage uh, play. But it can be done and be done very well. And that's why he's not too worried about, you know what? I've already got the, the channels, this lightning. Ch I, I don't understand. I'm not a, I, I'm neutral on, on lightning guys. I'm not 
gung ho for it. I'm not against it. I I'm just ignorant, and I don't want to speak out on something I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, but but that's not. That, yeah, but that's I know. Not the point. I do know, though, Jack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the point is, a transaction takes an, a certain amount of time to be completed, right? A few seconds, let's say. So if by the time the transaction is completed, you look at your wallet and you actually got USD, how can someone say that they are being forced to accept Bitcoin? Well, okay, here's the deal. You can do everything that they want to do on your own. It's just not easy. Okay, Jack knows what he's doing. He's going to make it easy for you. Now, and he says it's not free, okay? He says it's free like Robin Hood. Well, a few pennies. There's gonna yeah. be, there, has to be, there has to be a spread in there somewhere. It can be very nominal, bit and ass, but there's a spread in there. We don't know how it operates yet. So, yeah, I'm still, I'm waiting for the other shoes to drop, the other shoe to drop. There's a lot more to this than what's on the surface, well, of course, if and I was the merchant, it, it, it's, going to be, it's going to be a very sophisticated uh, uh, hedging operation to and particularly to manage an entire nation. I'm not saying it can't be done and, and could be great. It just, you know, I, a lot of these things we can't answer yet. We don't know enough. And, uh, you know, we just have to kind of wait and see. But to me, the big eye openers were exactly what you said. This is a you know a the problem is it's a sh, it's a ought but not should but not really because there is going to be a spread in there it's just that you're not going to notice it it's going to be so jack's going to get it down so small and it's going to look free just like trading on robin who looks free it's not free believe me it's not free. yeah it's not okay. free because the information costs it's not money. free because yeah. there there has there yeah that's not free there's a cost in there somewhere that's being covered to a very, you know, very elaborate uh, hedging operation. So, uh, and that because that's what I do. I mean, I I am a trader. And I know how these markets work. I don't do it for, uh, I don't trade for anybody. I just do it among my, you know. That's why I'm not a fincen. I only trade for me in my name. I, you know, me here and me there and me there. But I'm not a money transfer matter. I don't recommend anything. I said, I said, here's what I do, guys. You can see my trades. I'm kind of limited in what I can do because I'm not, I'm just publishing my trades and not showing my, you know, it used to be, I could trade my whole worth, but I, I'm not, I'm just trying to teach people how to use, cause I don't need to do this anymore. I'm just, I'm trying to teach Bitcoin in a very practical way. And, uh, uh, so it registers with people because I don't, what what business so are you do you have a, other businesses or what kind of business are you in i'm just a trader and a youtuber okay well yeah you got you're doing what you want to be doing but a lot you know i i had another business that's kind of pretty well died and that's what i'm doing now too but i've been in you know multiple things if you're a doctor or a lawyer you have a profession you can own a bunch of car washes who knows what you're doing the whole thing is you just want to be doing the very best at what you're doing and then use Bitcoin as your treasury. And I, I love that w w word that, that uh, Michael Saylor developed. He says, yeah, you, Bitcoin is your treasury. That's really excellent. That's exactly what I teach. I didn't use that phrase. And I think he nailed it with that phrase. And that's yeah. why I think we're going to have a session just on how to use Bitcoin as your treasury. That's really important. What, Jack Maller is doing, he's allowing anybody in San Salvador to have Bitcoin as their treasury. And you know what? He's providing that service. So it's very reasonable. It'll be very, no doubt it's going to, lightning makes it efficient. You know, I'm getting more and so, so like I just downloaded my first lightning network. I don't use Bitcoin except for relatively large transactions. You know, I don't, I run a, I pay all of my bills, you know, I, I, I have good credit. I run a big credit card expenses and pay them off every month. In fact, I just got notified. They closed one. I got to find out why they want to close me down. I pay it off every month. I use their card a lot, but apparently that, they may the not problem. be making any, that's the problem. Yeah, they're not making any money off you know, of me. The, probably. Yeah, so exactly. Well, we don't work anymore. <laughs> exactly. The problem is they don't make any money out of you. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's probably, I'm going to call them money and find out. Oh, geez, I just lost $50,000 credit line. <laughs> because, because I get all these rewards and all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what, uh, what country is next? What do you think? Iran? I, or will this continue in, in, in Central America? I, I'm not going to, I don't speak. I don't draw. The, the most important thing in my mind is, is, is we want entrepreneurs, people that are already producing, they're going to be the backbone of this thing. Now, maybe, you know, I think we're looking for the wrong solution. If we're looking for, for governments to get involved in it, they don't need to get involved. And do we really want them? Those are some, you know, I think that's, those are the issues that are going to be popping up. So, you know. Yeah, but maybe having uh, Bitcoin as legal tender in a few more countries would give it more weight, right? Well, or it could also uh, cause the wrong kind of weight and, you know, get a lot more resistance. It would be much more persuasive to have it uh, from more of a grassroots, you know, one exchange at a time by the movers and shakers, you know, for example, you know, we, at any given time, we have 10 to 50 people working for us. Okay. I don't explain Bitcoin to them. There's no way. I mean, I can't do it. It's, but they are on the Bitcoin standard, even though they don't know it because Bitcoin is paying their wages. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's the bottom line. So that, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful thing to bank the unbanked, okay? But for the most part, the unbanked are unbanked for a reason. Now, not always, sometimes it's un I might be unbanked here any day, you know, <laughs> my reason will be because, because, you know, they're not making any money on my account. I don't know. I'm going to find out Monday, you know, why I'm getting unbanked. But, uh, um, you know, I, I don't know that it's, I'm not all excited about going that route. In other words, anytime that you partnership with the government, you tend to come back and bite you in ways you never saw coming. That's and, true. That's uh, true. You know, <laughs> it might be good for the for the short run, but it's not good uh, in in the long run. What was it I was looking at today? It just reminds me, you know. And all of these industries are the same way. I mean, the corn growers association, there's a livestock. Association, and they all, and then they, oh yeah, we, they force you to join an association to promote their product. Well, that's not a free market, you know, and, uh, or they lobbying for all these farm bills. So they get subsidies. Oh, I know what I was going to, I want to start looking into the, the solar power thing. And this whole thing of with gold and silver, because I think it's really important. I'm, I'm just not persuaded, you know, it's kind of like asking the same question. Well, should government subsidize uh, uh, solar panels and wind power it's because that's renewable energy? Well, is it? You know, we're finding out all these solar power, what are they going to be? My understanding, I'm not the expert, but my understanding is they wind down every year. They get less and less production at the end of 15 or 20 years. You know, they got to be replaced and that's not cheap. The only reason they're, you're getting a negative electricity bill now is because the governments are subsidizing it, which just throws everything out of kilter. And so, you know, how is getting government involved with Bitcoin going to really help Bitcoin? Boy, I, I, I think that you're in a real dangerous uh, uh, point there. That you know, I'm, I'm not ready to drop. I'm, I'm not jumping on that train. <laughs> I'm just not because there's too many big problems coming uh, with it. And you know, but you, I, I'm, you said it yourself. Everyone was so excited to know about El Salvador, and this was. I'm enthusiasm, yeah, but but that's because of our thinking. We're th we've always thought of the idea that that uh, money should be, uh, money and state should be separated. That's that's a radical idea. It's like the, the getting away, the throwing the divine right of kings, which is a, a superstition for years. We still live under old superstitions. And I think a lot of that enthusiasm is coming from superstition, from a canard, a widely held false belief that was just part, it's kind of 
been there because it's always been that way. And we can't think of uh, what is this new thing that we've got? We don't know what we got here with Bitcoin. We're figuring it out. That's the excitement. Why do we need to get the government involved at all? Except for our own little short term. Oh, well, help me and this, this, this or that. But 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 is it really? It will it really? And I think that's a those are honest questions. I think these are things that guys is I'm gonna slow you down a little bit. Yeah, I'm excited about because it's cool, it's great, man. But don't know that you know, going there is necessarily the that might be the wrong turn instead of the right turn. So uh, it might not be just a question. A lot of things, it doesn't matter. You, there's two doors. You can choose either one and walk through it. But that's one door that I think you need to be real cautious about because it might be a, wrong, a bad door to go into. And I think that that's why it should be examined at this time. And we need to record the history because this is, it's historic. Everything that's going on now, it's historic. There's no doubt about that. But I do think uh, Bitcoiners themselves, particularly those that are really dogmatic, they need to be, you know, I, I, I'm, I go hodl, save, build a sound money, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin sound money. I think it's the only digital sound money. If, if it, Bitcoin doesn't succeed as digital gold, I don't think there is a digital gold. So that's kind of my belief. But there could be another one that could replace it. But you don't need to tell me about it. You just show us, you know, one. But that's not what's happening. Everybody. Because here's we have well, this is you know, it's here. Now they're not saying it's better than Bitcoin, so well, it's just different from Bitcoin, but you know, really, they're saying it's, it's better because they want and they'll stick it. Yeah, it's gonna be 10 times worth more than Bitcoin. Oh, it's still the same stuff. Look, all we need is a standard, and the competition needs to be on the generally accepted standard. That's where, and that's where the folks, until we are focused on that. And I do think that's one thing that that Jack Maller and this legal tender, they're going to be focusing only on Bitcoin. And so far, they've kept the shit corners all went down there. Yeah. But so far, they've kept yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's really it's really interesting. It's really fascinating they, to watch. Did you see how the vultures <laughs> immediately went to El Salvador? Yeah. yeah, and that's why I said as soon as I saw that, because my wife went and gone. I said, "No, we're not going down there now." I said, that, God, "That would be awful." And plus, we don't have the time. But yeah, I think uh, you know, I'm you know, I know some of these guys. The, the, there's some of these guys in sense of their hearts in the right. I don't know them personally, you know, or anything, but I know about that situation, and it it was it's been a horrible place to live. Uh, for the last, you know, four decades. And boy, if this can, can live, I mean, what an example, what a story it will be for Bitcoin and for sound money. Uh, if they pull this off, I think, you know, how can I, how can I, you know, be a naysayer? I'm not, it's just, but I mean, that doesn't mean we can't be, uh, rightly skeptical and, you know, and, Go slow, look at it, say, "Wow, what's going on down here?" Exactly. Because I, you know, I'm not, I'm not against that. I just, we, it's, it's a hard subject. Like I said, I just, <laughs> it's not going to be easy, and we have to really just, um, and be very considerate with others. So I mean, to go down there, and it is an initiative that this president has taken on himself. And we need to make sure he's the one that's leading it. He's getting educated in a very correct way. Uh, it sounds like Jack's doing a good job. I mean, it seems like it's pretty well written, particularly when you clarified that one point to me. That made a big difference to me, in my view. I kind of just, you know, I'm not here. I'm, I haven't come around just embracing, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so very cautious. But that made, it's a big game changer. It really is because it's not really, you're saying it's legal tender, but if it's, a, if it's a ought and not should, well, then that's fine. That's really not like we've redefined legal tender, <laughs> you know, whatever you, whatever you choose it is instead of being forced on you. So we'll just, you know, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, that's, that's why I am right now. And, uh, uh, and, but, it's historic. Yeah. And I think, and you know, I just, and I think everybody 
needs to calm down now and not call each other's names. We don't need to do that unless it's justified. I'm all for ad hominem attacks, but you don't need to attack somebody that's a, you know, skeptical or may not agree with you doesn't mean that they hate Bitcoin or they hate sound money. I know that. And there's a lot of room for uh, debate and discussion. And there's and, you know, that's how we're going to learn. That, that's how you're going to get this. I mean, uh, uh, so in, in this conference, I know I've invited, you know, there's people that will Roth party and hundred percent gold uh, standard, hundred percent reserve standard. And there's people that know fractional and that I have my own views. You know, I, I believe that uh, as long as it's not fixed, I'm against fractional. If it's fixed, any fixed exchange rate is, is no good. That's not a free market. So, uh, uh, the, the banking, uh, what the way it emerged is that it was an art where people, they literally would judge, you know, uh, what uh, the new goods being offered in the, the market were and the, you know, the, you wouldn't loan a hundred percent depending upon the risk. You might, you don't know what the value is until after it's sold actually, but you might just risk 20% of, of, you know, what you think the value is or 50%. You can spread the risk. That's how modern bank and commercial uh, paper evolved. And that was the, uh, it, that was really the gold standard and that was the innovation. That was the Bitcoin innovation, you know, during the Gilded Age. That was it. And it was, it was, it's been literally forgotten. It was forgotten already 50 years ago. That's why Harwood wrote it. So this is but the lost art of commercial banking. He said it has to be restored. And he said, this is simply a description of it. I'm not saying this is because he says, I didn't know. I wasn't alive at the time, but I've studied the history and this is how it worked. And uh, so I think it's very, and Hayek writes that too. He says, it's not just free market money, but it's free market banking. It's got to be money and banking working hand in hand. We now have the potential innovation as far as the money. Now, the, the challenge is going to be, are we able to apply this new innovation with the, the principles of sound commercial banking? Once we start to do that, and then I think you will see, uh, uh, you know, a, a very a, a relatively, uh, it, it'll just be the new standard and relative stability because it's, you know, uh, and as, and I also think it will act as a governor. I actually think that, you know, you could actually, nations could go back to a gold standard and you have this thing out here in the Netherlands between different jurisdictions that will actually act as a governor and, and keep the gold standard honest for a change. You know, it can't deteriorate like it did before. Cause we had this other thing, you get out of line and you know, we're shooting to another jurisdiction. And that's what I think the vision that Hayek saw that he saw this competition as uh, being uh, without borders and within merchants. And uh, he never saw it, at least initially, as being a retail uh, uh, option or buying a cup of coffee or being used as cash. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe it is. And a lot of people believe that. And that's part of the debate. That's part of the discussion. You know, that's what these things, but it's not, you know, I don't, I, I'm not dogmatic. I'm telling you what I think, but, you know, prove me wrong. <laughs> and that's what the free market's about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us a bit about your uh, the conference that you are organizing in Mexico, and what's the main purpose of the conference, and if you have already some confirmed speakers, tell us a bit about it. Yeah, well, there, yeah, it's on the Eddie. Can you pull that up the website? Uh, yes, or, oh, yeah, share. give us screen share. We can share it with you. But yeah, I, I can really regret your. You can just share it. On you're your invited side. to come, <laughs> but I can't. My my speakers, my panelists are all full up. Yeah, it's right. Bitcoin conference, uh, Bitcoin standard conference.com. It's kind of amazing because I actually, you know, when I, we came up with this idea, I, I checked it out and say, wow, Bitcoin standard conference.com is available. So that's the name of it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was great because immediately I invited a, Hey, if I do this, I invited three of my favorite, uh, tone and Jimmy and Giacomo and they all accepted. And I, and uh, uh, these are a lot of work, but it's a great story because basically I'm able to do this and I'm glad to be doing it. 
And uh, I couldn't have done this a few years. I couldn't have done it until this year because Bitcoin, you know, I'm now can I have enough to sponsor or at least a bankroll. Oh, there we go. We got Emily on there. So, uh, you know, I'm really that's, that's Joe says, right? Joe says is in charge of that company. <laughs> in the, yes, the yeah, center. Joe's going. He's on the. He's be on the speak. He's on our speaker. I can show you that. Yeah, Joe. Joe Sats. He he's our first sponsor. I've got four more available. I think uh, I, I'm committed. I think Bitso. Uh, you know, I've had two commitments. I mean, buy Bit and in Bitso, which I can, I can endorse those who come. I have about two two more spots left. But it really helps because you know so far this thing's just a big expense. We don't have very many that many people attending. But well, you know, I'm I yes, I am kind of the philosophy, you know, I just want this to be the best conference that's ever been in Bitcoin, and the rest of it will take care of itself. And so I invited a lot of people like George Sullivan. and I invited and he wanted to come, but he he noticed on that that thread that we did, you know, he said, I would like to come, but I'd be getting rotary cuff surgery. So um but he would have loved to have him on for this conference because uh, what we do, we'll just go to the, you won't go through the schedule so you can see what's happening. Um, the, the, actually the conference starts uh, on what day, the, the 12th, Thursday. but the night yeah. or the 11th. Yeah. But the Wednesday we have a canary dinner. And so uh, we, if you buy a conference ticket, you actually have two nights. You have that, that Wednesday night and Thursday night, and then we check out on Friday. Uh, but the most important thing are these topics and the way we're setting it up is it's really panelists. I'm, I'm really inviting all the speakers to present papers or some have videos or they have podcasts, uh, radio bot podcasts dealing with these subjects. We want to get those on first so everybody can understand everybody's coming from different backgrounds. And so that's a lot of what, what, what uh, formulates our views. So the more we can get out there, then I think the more relevant the, the uh, uh, moderators can direct the questions because I think, you know, for example, you know, Jimmy song should be on. Well, thank God for Bitcoin. I, he should be asked a, a direct question question much different from Knut, who's the, the atheist, you know, who wanted to be on that, thank God for Bitcoin. But we can really cover a lot of ground. And it's almost a semi scholar. Now, these these ivory, ivory tire guys, they have these seminars that the, the, the institutions pay for it, and they have these intellectual debates and so forth. This is kind of the, the same on that uh, format, but it's for the layman. And so and that we all can participate because the more uh, it's for Bitcoin to really work, it, it's got to, it's got to go where the pavement hits the road. And then, and, and that part is, I like what, what Jack Maller is doing. It's just, I'm not sure it's going to quite work that way. I think it's going to work through producers first, but I could be wrong. That's just my view. But we start out with, thank God for Bitcoin. We have three of the, the authors of that book there. Uh, and I'll actually be moderating that. Uh, and then we have the next one is the difference between Bitcoin and the Bitcoin standard and Bitcoin Motors is going to be moderating that. We have some great uh, panelists. We've got David Puell, who is one of the best fundamentalists in Bitcoins on, on that panel. We've got uh, Joachim Buch is from Iceland and he's a fellow at American Institute. So I kind of know his views and where he's coming come from. I've got an old friend of mine, Gabriel Devine, who I used to follow uh, when he was he was one of the very originals on uh, World Crypto Network. And my MC is going to be Thomas Hunt or Mad Bitcoins because I can't think of any Bitcoin conference that, that uh, would not it would not be Bitcoin if you didn't have Mad Bitcoin as the master of ceremony. So that's why we're we're doing it that way. Then we have another panel. What is the future of Bitcoin banking? And I want to be on that one because I have my own definite views <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> how to use bitcoin as your treasury okay and you know well, you should have anybody that, you should have invited michael sailor for that one <laughs> well exactly well i, I never, never got through to him i he could show up if he wants to but uh i'm not here uh i, I look i just made an offer everybody gets 500 dollars for coming and, and this, the, the party's on me but they got to get here and and so i'm not I'm not spending, a, we're not doing this for headliners. We're doing it. The headliner is Bitcoin. 
the <laughs> the Bitcoin exactly. standard. That's, yeah, and that's so. And I'm glad that a lot of people never got with me. Are they going to wait to see which way the wind blows? So I said, but these some of these other guys said, yeah, I'm coming. Said, okay, you're gone. You know, <laughs> I want you because you got the enthusiasm. You know, you may not have all the following and all that, but you don't need to because that's that's what I'm here for. I'm glad to do this. And that's why I just want to make this really an outstanding content and have a lot of fun in the meantime, too. So then we have uh, hedging, managing and hedging risk on the back Bitcoin standard. That's one of the things I teach. And, and I want to be on that one. And again, my, to my, my biggest concern right now is I think the biggest risk is not exchanges or legacy exchanges. I think it's jurisdiction. And of course, Anytime that if you have your assets on le legacy exchanges, you are at risk, uh, not because they're corrupt or anything like that. It's just they have to, you know, you, you're fine. Once you enter a jurisdiction, you're agreeing to their rules. And if they change it overnight, you're stuck. So you, you want to limit your, your risk in your jurisdictions. And then, of course, we have the, the big issue that we're talking about that we had so much fun with us last month, and that is big Bitcoin legal tender. Should it be em embraced or abolished? And, uh, you know, there's so much strong opinions on both sides of this one. I've, I've mellowed out mine uh, quite a bit. And particularly that was your persuasion because you brought something new to the table, you know, and uh, uh, I wish you were here. <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> but I feel pretty well fall. You know, if you get here, we'll, we'll find Maybe you'll get me in the next one. But I was actually... Well, well, hopefully we'll again do this next year. Yeah. No, I, was, I was actually thinking about going to this one. I still have to confirm some stuff, but I, I don't know if I will be able to do it. But I, I am trying. Well, if I you am come, trying. I'll work it. We'll work you in somehow. Or you present your paper. I'll get you on here. It says, I, I got all, I'm all free beat out right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have... Uh, uh, then after the first day, we have the, a poolside buffet, and then we have a. We only have one speaker, and that's Giacomo Zucco because he's the most fun speaker out there. And then we, we're going to have a, an awards dinner that night, and then the next morning we start out again. And what is competition in currencies? And will Bitcoin become the world reserve currency? Hundred percent reserve, fraction reserve, or no reserve? the politics of the Bitcoin standard, building on the Bitcoin standard. And then we have one that kind of a catch all at the end beyond Bitcoin, the future of self sovereignty and the digital age. So, uh, and then we go to the horsepower ranch. So if you go up there, you go to the homepage and kind of see the whole conference home. What we're really promoting is the entire, uh, the entire package. And it starts out, scroll down. It starts out with, the Canivri dinner on August 11th. And then the I conference. I love that one. I love that one, by the way. The Carnivory dinner. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to have one the 11th. And then the conference is the, the 12th and the 13th. We ought to put the conference some down. We'll turn it in between there. I, somehow that doesn't. Yeah. I'll talk, to, I'll talk to Shipley and see if we can put that, change that a little bit. Uh, so, and then what happens is on Friday, we actually, uh, we're checking everybody out of the hotel and take them to the horsepower ranch. And there's a picture of the horsepower ranch. It's just outside of Ensenada. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be riding mm -hmm. uh, our quads and we have ATVs out there, barbecue. There's a nice pool out there. So we're going to have a real adventure. That's uh, and that's when you really get to know people too, because you're hanging out with these guys. And uh, that, in fact, we have a VIP package where, uh, are you still on the home page? Yeah, go back to the home page so I can show the whole thing. Uh, Jimmy Song and Giacomo are both having workshops. So programming blockchain. Okay. I'm not. Yeah, I don't know programming at all, but you need to have a background in Python or you won't even let you take the. Yeah, and it's not cheap. It's like $3,000 if you order it now. And if you wait, it'll be 4,000. And Giacomo's having the Bitcoin node. The big thing is that Tone is actually coming here to take Giacomo's class. So if somebody signs up for the workshop, you'd be hanging around Tone and Giacomo and Jimmy for two days and just kind of cool stuff. So we have a, a VIP ticket. And uh, 
Yeah, we'll go to the pricing. So there it is. You can get all this stuff individually, but we're kind of want to sell it as a package. And, mm -hmm. and the basic conference is $950. That's for two days, but that includes two, two nights and two days at the conference. Uh, and then so, so that, you, the, that price includes the hotel, right? Yes. That price includes, yeah, it's really a bargain. It's not really a, a first class hotel. So it's, it's, uh, and, and we'll have transportation. If you fly into Tijuana, we have transportation available. We do charge for that. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but we'll meet, we'll have somebody at the airport ready to pick you up and drive you right down to the hotel. Uh, we have, of course, the Canivri dinner, and then we had the adventure tour. So, and they're all priced separately, but uh, we price them all together for 1995. But, you know, this is well beyond me and my influence. And so I've also priced it so that uh, you can, anybody that's coming can get a 15% discount simply by going to the panelist list. <laughs> and we'll show you how this works. <laughs> There you go. There it is. Yeah. There. Oh, we got to do the VIP package. The VIP package, that that kind of supports us because I need to sell. I only have five. I don't have very many of those available. But but uh, uh, we have the VIP conference that that is, includes everything, and they get a membership to to my newsletter, and then we have the VIP package with the workshop. So you can actually do that. You'll get Jockmo's workshop and Jimmy's workshop. You can either take them yourself. Or if you feel generous, we'll hand you. You're not qualified, but you want to do this. Uh, we're going to hand out scholarships, and so the people that are on scholarships, they can't afford to come to the conference. I'm going to throw in a free conference. But we'll cover the the workshop, whichever one they can take. And uh, yeah, there's Jimmy, and you just hit Jimmy's song. Now let's say you want to sign up under Jimmy's song. You'll get a go to his name, then register for the conference. And then at the drop down menu, it has all the different programs there. So you can get, uh, yeah, I recommend the full ride. We call that the full ride. That's 1995, but with the discount, it's 1695. We get credit. He gets a little credit for an affiliate code. That's where we, we've set it up. Uh, and then if you like, for example, you want to get the VIP with the workshop, uh, there it is now that's 17,000. Now, the reason you want that is we're actually going to be at El Cielo, which is a winery for the first two nights. So we'll actually, if you want to just really re relax with these guys and sit around, <laughs> I've only got uh, probably three, maybe as many as five of those available. Uh, but you're really paying for that two days at El Cielo, uh, before the conference. Now, some of them will be staying there. We're, we're working that out. Some people want to go to a hotel for the conference and people, some people want to stay out there, but, uh, that's the package, but the, the package that, that most people are getting is the, you come in on the 11th, uh, you arrive. We recommend if you're driving down here, it's a beautiful drive from, uh, San Diego to Ensenada. It's about an hour drive, but you can take your time, uh, have lunch along the way. Uh, lots of ocean views. I recommend La Fonda if you do that. Looks nice. Uh, and then, yeah. And then, and then what happens is, uh, you check into the hotel and go to the Canivari dinner that night. Uh, we have the two day conference. Everything's taken care of. You'll get coffee and donuts in the morning and a snack lunch for lunch. And then on Friday, we all, we take you out to the horsepower ranch. We provide the transportation. We get your bags out there. We check you in. We have a relaxed evening, or you can stay up and party that night. Uh, and then we get up in the morning and we do the adventure tour. And that's going to, uh, you can see a little bit of, I've got three of these machines. That's my new hobby. <laughs> so we're having ATVs out there and we're, we're going to be actually going from uh, the horsepower ranch to Ho Ojo Negros, which is, uh, uh, black eye in, in span and in, in translated and uh, as actually part of the road is yeah there we are you can see see what it is so it's going to be kind of the event it's going to be a lot of fun you're going to learn a lot about each other's character on the, these adventure tours can you find out you know what people's fears are this really good experience i mean it just is you, you walk away and say wow that was something else and uh, that's what this is going to be about Okay, and, uh, that looks very nice. You are uh, you are almost convincing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we're gonna sell out. And, you know, like I said, I kind of wish I'd know because 
you know, I'd already was fully committed. I'm getting people now that they, oh, can, and I said, you know, I've had to turn them down. I said, I don't have a spot open anymore because I'm, I'm more than full. I, uh, you know, we added some people. I really wasn't planning on it. And uh, so I have, I, you know, if they really want to come and be on the panel, I said, the only way you can now, you know, we are offering, uh, if, if you're a sponsor, we approve you as a sponsor, we'll, we'll let you be on two different panels. But uh, we, I really want this to hopefully take it to the next level uh, as far as uh, it being, you know, an intellectual uh, uh, conference too. We're not here really promoting anything except the ideas behind Bitcoin. And we want everybody to be able to present their full arguments on whatever issue it is. In fact, uh, they can submit articles for any of the, the panels so we can see where they're coming from. And, you know, if you see the panelists, they're only going to have time to address the issues for maybe five, 10 or 15 minutes. And then we open it up for the attendees. So uh, we want people to have, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be posting where I'm coming from on different issues. And we are encouraging the other speakers and panelists to do the same thing. And uh, the challenge I think is going to be for these moderators. <laughs> how, they, how are you going to moderate a group like this? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we are a bit short on time on my side already, so I will have to go soon. I really want to thank you. I want really want to thank you for uh, this um, kind of interview debate uh, about the Bitcoin standard and all the things we spoke about. Uh, it's always great to hear you and your ideas, as you know. Um, so, well, I want to encourage you because I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed. You, you really came across well. I really want to thank you for the time, uh, for your time, for this interview slash debate. It's always great to hear you. Um, you know that I, I am a, a follower on Twitter and I started to really enjoy your ideas and, and everything you say on Twitter since I met you on Tone's show. And since then I've been following you. So thank you for your time here and for the debate. Well, thank you. And I, I just want to encourage you with where you're going because you know there's no money in, in doing what you're doing. You're doing it because you love doing it. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. I know that. So and people don't understand that. But but you know, this is what we're doing. We we have a heart for sound money. And that's what I noticed immediately. Uh, you when we entered that thread, you, you kept your head all the way through and you're listening and watching because there's a lot of content there, a lot of stuff to digest. And that's what, that's for the purpose. That's, that's my goal with the, this conference is that, you know, we, we have a huge diversity within Bitcoin and we have, there's a huge areas of debate. And a lot of these issues that we're addressing now, it's really hard to see that if, if you've just been in Bitcoin, but they're same issues that we are addressing 40 years ago under the gold and the gold standard. So, you know, I think gold is sound money. It, it has a physical uh, shape and great for nations, but Bitcoin transcends that and it creates a new, what do they call that? Now, a dynamic or they call it, they have another a paradigm. I think they like to use now, but, uh, and, uh, and I think, and it's creating an entire new monetary structure. And so I think it's very important, the foundations that we're laying now. I like to see all of these issues discussed thoroughly and thoroughly documented uh, because uh, we don't know, and it's very presumptuous. You know, I think F. A. Hayek wrote the book. I don't know if it was a book or just he's known for the saying, the pretense of knowledge. And that's what we all tend to go <laughs> thinking we kind of know a lot of things that we don't. So, you know what, we want to, you know, keep our eyes open, keep our ears open and, uh, and hopefully recognize that, you know what, uh, maybe I have a pretense of knowledge here. And so we need to listen to each other because there's a lot of really good minds on this. And, uh, and uh, you know, it takes a while 
Uh, Bitcoin is not an e it's so easy it's difficult and <laughs> yeah. uh, because it, you can't believe it's that simple it's like the training I just found a new book on, from our group that somebody was trading in the zone or something a guy got it he's like, yeah those, you, you know you 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 trading can be learned, but you have to have those first principles down or you'll never all the fundamentals and all the technical analysis isn't going to help you one bit. In fact, it hurts you. Money management. And that's what money management. You, money. you said to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's the way the same thing with Bitcoin. And we want to manage Bitcoin. Let's be careful on what we're doing. Yeah, it might really sound legal tender. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. But you know, maybe we're getting a little over and through not that i want to discourage enthusiasm because i love it you know but there's no reason just because i'm a critic or just because i'm not in full agreement that doesn't mean i'm a hater of bitcoin or sound money at all so there's the two different things and and we don't know we really don't and but we're you know what the, what's cool about your generation is you're going to find out you know we're going to have all kinds of things that we're going to look back Five, 10, 15 years now. Wow, I didn't know it was going to go this direction. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and I think exactly. that's where we're at now. And so, uh, you know, uh, I mean, just look at the changes that have been made. I mean, and you're seeing a whole new, uh, a lot of people that we thought were solid have fallen away, and a lot of new people are coming up. And I mean, you're, New, I mean, I really appreciate that that debate you had. You were, you know, you educated me, guys. I have this group. They they're teaching me as much as I'm teaching them because <laughs> you know they're, you know. So well, I really appreciate I really appreciate your compliments for sure. Uh, coming from you, that's yeah. that's a that's a great thing for me. So, uh, well, I hope you make it. We'll find it. <laughs> yeah, let's see how this evolves. Let's see how this evolves in El Salvador, right? And I, we will be rooting for <laughs> that. Nothing else. If you go to San, and maybe if we go to San Salvador, we can plan a trip together. Because I, my, the goat lady wants to go. I'm going to be booked up after this trip because uh, uh, Tone's got his uh, understanding Bitcoin and then the, the summit. So we're probably going to do a little round the world tour, and then uh, come back and uh, by be I, the Baja 1000 down here is at the end middle or end of November. I'll be back just in time for that. We'll spend the holidays here. And, and then, uh, uh, I'd like to get down there sometime. So it's definitely on my, my want, want to do list. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> so let me know. Maybe we can make it down there together. It's just hop and skip and jump for us here. It's a, be a major trip for you. We'll keep in touch for sure. Now you have my telegram right. already. <laughs> yeah. And I'm learning how to use it. Now I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a little more proficient at these things. People are very patient with me because they realize, you know, I don't know very much, I, but what I know, I know, but most of the stuff I don't, <laughs> particularly when it comes to the tech, but look at the studio. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, look at what we got here. I, we didn't have this a year ago or two years ago. This yeah. Is, I remember. This is all I remember when you used to speak, uh, close to all the, you know, the computer screens and that table dressed as a goat. I still remember that. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see what happens. I, we'll, we'll see. You. I hope you can make it here. I'd love to, uh, if you, if you make it, I'll try to pick you up in per in fact, come, you know what? If you can make it come early, try and see if you can come. We'll figure out something for you. If you can get down here on, uh, uh, you know, Sunday or Monday, Monday, because people are coming in Sunday and Monday and, you know, we'll nothing else. We have, we have a, a accommodations here too. The people come by and our members come and stay here regularly. So we're, we just have a big surprise when you come down here. We want to show off what we're doing and hopefully take it to the next level. That's great. That's great so, to know. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much see again. You. And I'll see you soon. I hope on the show again. Okay. I'll <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Anytime you let me know, I'll be much freer after this conference right now. I got to do all these promotions for the conference and, and, uh, but then after that, I'm, I'm glad to do it. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.